In this video, I explain to you what Fly's kappa is, how it is calculated and how you can interpret the results. Let's start right away with the first question. What do you need the Fly's kappa for? In general, you use the Fly's kappa whenever you want to assess the agreement between more than two raters. In the case of Fly's kappa, the variable to be measured by the raters is a nominal variable. Therefore, if you have a nominal variable, you use the Fly's kappa. For your information, if you had an ordinal variable and more than two raters, you would use Candle's W test. And if you had a metric variable, you would use the intra-class correlation. If you had only two raters and a nominal variable, you would use Cohen's kappa. But that's enough theory for now, let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have developed a measuring instrument, for example a questionnaire, that doctors can use to determine whether a person is depressed or not. Now you give the measuring instrument to doctors and let them evaluate 50 people with it. The big question now is, how well do the doctor's measurements agree? If the assessments of the doctors agree very well, one speaks of a high inter-rater reliability. And it is precisely this inter-rater reliability that the Fly's kappa measures. The Fly's kappa is a measure of inter-rater reliability. And the Fly's kappa is therefore a measure of how reliably more than two raters measure the same. So far we have considered the case where more than two people measure the same thing. However, the Fly's kappa can also be used when the same rater takes the measurement at more than two different times. In that case, the Fly's kappa indicates how well the measurements of the same person agree. And in this case, the variable under study has two characteristics, depressive or non-depressive. Of course, the variable can also consist of more than two characteristics. So the Fly's kappa is a measure of the agreement between more than two dependent categorical samples. It is important to note that with Fly's kappa, you can only make a statement about how reliably the raters measure the same. But you cannot make a statement about whether what the raters measure is the right thing or not. So if the raters almost always measure the same thing, you would have a very high Fly's kappa. Whether this measured value fits with the reality, thus the correct is measured, Fly's kappa does not tell you. In the first case, one speaks of reliability and in the second case, one speaks of validity. Now, of course, the question arises, how is Fly's kappa calculated? Well, there are two ways to do this. Either you use a statistic software like DataTab or you calculate it by hand. Of course, knowing how to calculate by hand will also help you to understand Fly's kappa better. We will now go through both ways. First, I will show you how to do it with DataTab and then we will look at the formulas. In order to do this, simply go to datatab.net and copy your own data into this table. Now you click on the tab Reliability. Under Reliability, you can calculate different reliability statistics depending on how many variables you choose and which level of measurement they have and you will get a suitable suggestion. The Fly's cap is calculated for nominal variables. If your data was detected as metric, please change the level under data view to nominal. If you now click on rater 1 and rater 2, the Cohen's kappa will be calculated. If you further click on rater 3, the Fly's kappa will be calculated for you. And here below you can read the calculated Fly's kappa. If you don't know how to interpret the result, 
Just click on Interpretations in Words. An inter-rater reliability analysis was performed between the dependent samples of rater 1, rater 2 and rater 3. For this purpose, the fly's cap was calculated, which is a measure of the agreement between more than two dependent categorical samples. The fly's cap showed that there was a slight agreement between samples rater 1, rater 2 and rater 3 with kappa equals 0 0.03. And now I will explain to you the formulas behind the flies kappa and how you can calculate the flies kappa by hand. We can calculate the flies kappa with this equation. In order to do this, we need PO, which is the observed agreement of the raters, and we need PE, which is the expected agreement if the raters judge completely randomly, for example, just flip a coin on each patient to see if they are depressed or not. So how do we calculate PO and PE? Let's start with PE. Let's say we have seven patients and three raters. Each patient was rated by each rater. In the first step, we simply count how many times a patient was rated as depressed and how many times as not depressed. For the first patient, zero raters said that this person is not depressed and all raters, so three raters said that this person is depressed. For the second person, one raters said that the person is not depressed and two raters said that the person is depressed. Now we do that for all the other patients. We can calculate the sum in each case now. In total, we have eight ratings with not depressed and 13 ratings with depressed. In total, there were 21 ratings. This allows us to calculate how likely it is that a person will be rated as not depressed or as depressed. For this, we divide the number of ratings of depressive and not depressive by the total number of 21. So once 8 divided by 21 and thus we get that 38% of the patients are rated as not depressed by the raters and then another 13 divided by 21 and thus we get that 62% of the patients were rated as depressed. In order to calculate PE now, we square both values and sum them up. So 0 0.38 squared plus 0 0.62 squared, which is equal to 0 0.53. Now we have PE and we still need to calculate PO. PO can be calculated with this formula. Don't worry, it looks more complicated than it is. Let's start with the first part. Capital N is the number of patients, for example 7, and small n is the number of raters, for example 3. This gives us 0 0.024 for the first part. In the second part of the formula, we simply square each value in this table and sum that up. So 0 squared plus 3 squared to finally 1 squared plus 2 squared. That gives 47. And the third part comes out to 7 times 3, which equals 21. If we substitute everything, we get 0 0.024 times 47 minus 21, which is equal to 0 0.624. We now have PO and PE. When we insert them into the formula for kappa, we obtain a kappa of 0 0.19. With this we get just a slight agreement. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.